In this exercise, we are going to set up a load balancer with multiple API servers on DigitalOcean. This will help us to distribute the incoming traffic across multiple servers, which will improve the reliability. And we will also prevent having a single point of failure by setting up two load balancers for redundancy. We'll do this in three simple steps. First, we'll create the additional servers in DigitalOcean with the same Nginx configuration for all of them. And then we will set up the load balancers and we'll configure it to distribute the traffic across multiple servers. And as you will see, it's actually easier than you probably think. In the first step, we will go to our droplets of our DigitalOcean account. If you remember, this is the droplet that we have set up in the previous exercise. So we will go inside of this user management system. Now we want to create a copy of this API and there are two ways that we can do this. We can either set up a new droplet and then do the exact configurations as we have here. Or a better and easier approach is to go to the snapshots of this droplet. Snapshot is basically a copy of this droplet at this exact point. We can click on take live snapshot. This will start creating the snapshot of this API at this exact moment. This will generate the snapshot of this API here, but it didn't generate a clone of our API yet. And for that, we need to click on the more option here and then create droplet based on this snapshot. Here for the droplet, make sure that you select the same region that you selected for the previous server. In my case, it's in San Francisco and in the third data center. And everything else will remain the same. I will just downsize this droplet as we don't need too much power here. And you can choose to rename this. For example, we can say instance 2 of the user management system and we can create the droplet. Now we can go into our new droplet and in the access tab, we can launch the droplet console. And first we can check whether our app is cloned properly or not by doing ls. And you can see that we have the git repository of our user management system. Next, we need to allow the port where this app will be running. And in our case, it will be on port 3000. So we will do sudo ufw allow port 3000. This will update the rules to allow this port to be accessed from the internet. And next we need to navigate to our git repository and we just need to start our server by doing npm start. And with that our app is running on port 3000. We can verify that by copying the IP address of this droplet and we can go to that IP address and port 3000. You can see that our app is running on this port and we are also able to access the API endpoints. For example, we can go to slash API slash users and this will fetch the users from this API. Now we can move on to the first step, which is configuring and setting up the load balancer. For that, we will go to the networking tab of this panel. And here, the third option is load balancers. So we can create a regional or global load balancer here. The difference between those is regional means that you are distributing traffic in the same region across different servers, but all of these servers are in that region. And global means that you set up one single global load balancer and this will be responsible for distributing the traffic. So in case of global, let's say you have some users in Europe and some of them are in US. If you set this up to be global, it has to be in one side of the world. Let's say it is in US. In this case, the users from Europe will need to make unnecessary long request to reach to your load balancer in US. And of course, it will be slower for them compared to users in US. So it's a better approach to set this up as regional. You can have multiple load balancers. Some of them can be in US for US users and some of them can be in Europe for Europe users. And similarly, you can have this distributed geographically to be close to your end users. Now, in our case, we need to choose the exact same data center where we set up the droplets. In my case, it was in San Francisco and in the third data center. Now, if I scroll down, the next option is the network visibility. So you can set this to be either external for users so that users can access it from the internet. Or this can also be internal. But in this case, users won't be able to access this from the internet. In our case, we are interested in the first option. And next, you can also see the scaling configuration. 
This is the part where we talked about the single point of failure. For example, if I set this to be 1, you can see that the high availability is disabled in this case. That's because you have the single load balancer and if this goes down, all of the system can be interrupted. And a single load balancer can handle 1000 requests in simultaneous way. But if we increase this number from 2 or above, you can see that the high availability is now enabled. That is because there is a very little chance that these two load balancers will fail at the same time. So anything above 2 is more than enough for having the high availability. You just need to configure it based on the concurrent requests that you are expecting to receive. And next here we can connect the droplets, which are these servers where we will redirect the traffic to. And in our case we have set up two servers for now. We can search for our user management system and you can see the two instances here. Now one important thing here, if you for example select a region where you don't have droplets and you try to search for these droplets here, you won't be able to find them because they are not in the same data center as this load balancer and hence this load balancer cannot distribute the traffic to that servers. So I will reselect the region where my droplets are located in and in the connect droplets step I will select the two servers that I have available. The next setup part is forwarding rules. So we will need to set up which port will forward to which port in our droplet. So port 80 is the default port where the users will try to access our load balancer and it's generally a good practice to leave this as it is. But here we need to connect this properly to our droplets and if you remember we access our droplets on port 3000 which means that we will need to redirect all of the requests from port 80 to be redirected to the port 3000 in our droplets. And that is it, we can create our load balancer. You can choose some specific name or you can go with the name that it suggests and create your load balancer. And once it is created, you can see your droplets that are connected to this load balancer. In our case it is two, but it can be more. And that is similar to this structure that we have here. In our case we have two load balancers and we have two servers and we are redirecting all of the traffic between those two. But in the future we can add more and we just need to configure it to be redirected from here. As you can see it also comes with the built-in health checks and also the downtime measurements. And we can also verify that this works. If I now visit the IP address of this load balancer, you can see we are accessing the same data that we have in the server. So this is basically redirecting it to the port 3000 on the other servers. And every time that I refresh, this will connect to a new server. And we can also access all of the routes that we have in the APIs, like API slash users and API slash any other routes that we have available. So now users will access only to this load balancer. And of course not through the IP address, but with connected domain. And then this will distribute the traffic across these servers evenly. And in the graphs you have all of the necessary data like how many HTTP requests you are getting per second and how many active connections you have and also the health checks of these servers. So you have the health checks of all of the connected servers and whenever one of them or any of them goes down it will let you know and it will also redirect all of the traffic to the healthy servers.